Good evening. <clears throat> Good to see you. We're going to do a little reading tonight. We're going to have another session with Victor Pride tonight. We're going to have another session. It's going to be interesting tonight. We'll wait till the attendance kind of populates a little bit. I watched a good movie recently called Old Henry with Tim Blake Nelson. And uh, actually, Trace Adkins was in it. That was pretty cool. Good kind of uh, Western. If anyone saw it, let me know. I highly recommend it. It's got a couple little twists and turns in it that kind of surprise you. You'll like it. Old Henry. Yeah. Seventy five in Austin. Cool. What do we got here? My Lord. Sixty five degrees here. I spent some cold evenings out here this past winter, didn't I? Some real cold evenings. But tonight we're going to talk about uh, how to overcome the bad news blues. According to Victor Pride. And it's going to be interesting. And of course, my commentary on it all. Just seeing who shows up here. We got Peg. We got Diesel. Carl is here. John Hoover from POV Media. Yeah, I was thinking Henry Rifle as well when I saw it. Yeah. I have the Henry Rifle catalog, which is just fun to go through. Glenn, good to see you. My friendly acquaintance, how are you? Thea, good to see you. Colorado. Good to see y'all. It is. Well, we'll get going here because it's... Uh, this is a, a shorter chapter, but I'll be reading and then adding some commentary as well. The last time... Uh, we did this it was kind of fun, wasn't it? Several nights ago when I was reading from Victor Pride's book called Bold and Determined, Part 4. Just a lot of fun. I'm thinking of, it's funny, I'm thinking of getting a Henry rifle. I'm thinking. I have to find out who carries them in this area. But I really, I think they're uh, they're just beautiful. Made in the U.S., yeah. Excellent. All right. How to overcome the bad news blues. There was a baseball team called the Bad News Bears. Remember that? Wasn't that a movie? They were a ragtag group of misfits who couldn't play ball to save their lives. The whole world was against them, and it showed in the way that they played. But through diligence, hard work, and effective coaching, the tide turned for them. They rallied together, they listened to their coach, became the best ball team ever. I think I've never actually seen the movie, but I get these nonstop emails from a ragtag group of misfits who always say the same things to me. I call these emails the bad news blues. I can't succeed because of X, Y, Z. The world is against me because of X, Y, Z. Or as I would say, Fill in the blank. They love hearing themselves complain like an old broken down blues singer. The bad news blues. Why, 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 why I can't instead of saying, here's how I will. 
these bad news blues singers tend to come from America or Australia. I would understand a little better if they were from Greece, because it's very hard to succeed in Greece. On the other hand, it's very easy to succeed in America, because America is the land of opportunity. I was able to make six figures a year in America with no business experience, no schooling, no contacts, just will, desire, and grit. Immigrants come from living 10 deep in one-bedroom apartments, and they make their wealth in America. Kids born here don't know what they got until it's gone, so they send me bad news blues by email. If I could sit these bad news blues people down and speak to their hearts and minds, I would say this very gently. You know Victor Pride's not going to say anything gently. Listen, you fucking dipshits. <laughs> I think that's funny. When he says, I would say this very gently. Listen, you fucking dipshits. <laughs> You're never going to get anywhere complaining like a little sissy. When you act like a little bitch, of course the world is against you. The whole world is against sissy complainers when you act like a man the world couldn't be when you act like a man the world couldn't be more with you you have all the opportunities that never existed in the entire world and you don't even know it you've been too busy complaining playing video games and masturbating to cuck porn to open your sissy little eyes so here's what you're going to do you're going to make some money. You're going to work at Starbucks, McDonald's, borrow some money from mommy, get the money wherever you can. You're going to get a passport. You're going to buy an airplane ticket. You're going to sit your ass on an airplane bound for Vietnam, the Philippines, Colombia, or Brazil. This is already funny to me. You will go anywhere third world. And when you get there, you're going to have to hang out in poor areas. You're going to see how people with nothing live. You're going to witness how fortunate you are to have been born anywhere that isn't there. You're going to witness how much opportunity you had. After you make this trip, you realize you've never been oppressed. You've simply been a spoiled crybaby. Then, when or if you come back, you're going to follow Victor's eight-step formula to stop being a baby. So obviously, this is the eight-step formula that Victor gives. Number one, stop complaining. Crying is for babies. So don't ever cry about anything ever again. If something is wrong, you simply make a change and move forward. Each and every complaint deserves a slap at the face. Every time one of these little sissy spoiled brats complains to me, I would just as soon slap them in the face than look at them. Since these little brats are on the internet, I'm going to slap them in the face with words. Number two, language matters. Language matters. Sounds like there's an ambulance or a fire truck going somewhere tonight. I don't know if you can hear that. Language matters. What you say is what becomes your reality, so choose your words wisely. The mind is more powerful than anything, and what you see in yourself is what you become. Why I can't gets replaced with, here's what I will do. I really like that. Instead of thinking and saying why I can't do this or why you can't do that, use this sentence. Here's what I will do. Number three, work backwards. Everyone knows exactly what they want. Come to me in person and say, I just don't know what I want. I can't succeed because of this or that. And I will slap you in the face free of charge. <laughs> oh, he is too funny. Everyone on earth knows exactly what they want. Money, power, women, freedom. He's obviously speaking to men here. So that now you know what you want, you simply work backwards. Number four, be consistent and don't stop. Success doesn't happen overnight. It's the result of days, months, and years of consistency. My pal Mike Cernovich and I were at my dinner table one night. 
And he asked me, when did Bold and Determined, which is his business, start paying you real money? Real money. F you money. The money came at four years in. Cernovich has been writing online for over a decade. This year, he had a smash overnight success with his book, Guerrilla Mindset. Did I tell you? Get yourself Guerrilla Mindset. Didn't I tell you that last time? Get yourself Guerrilla Mindset. Get the audio version of it. The audio version. Listen to a little bit every day. So you dummies who ask, how can I make money now? Go get a job at Starbucks. Real money doesn't happen real fast. It takes years, so just accept the fact that it takes years and move forward. Number five, follow 30 days of discipline. There's no better program on earth than turning sissies into men of action. Do I keep screaming about the power? Do I have to keep screaming about the power of discipline? Just follow the thing and thank me later. What's interesting is, uh, I don't even know if his book, 30 Days, what was it, 30 Days of Discipline? I don't even know if that's available anymore. Just follow it and then thank me later. Number six, pay it forward. After you've made your mark, you're going to hear bad news blues all the time. Complainers are going to seek you out so they can tell you how hard it is. Refrain from slapping them in the face and point them to this article instead. It's interesting. He's talking about the book. Number seven, never argue or debate with idiots. It makes you look dumb trying to change the mind of someone who's crazy. It makes you look dumb trying to change the mind of someone who is a quitter. Wow. People will tell you all the time, you can't succeed because of racism. You can't succeed because of sexism. You're too racist to succeed. You're too sexist to succeed. You're too black. You're too white. Blah, blah, blah. Excuse after excuse. Tune these people out of your life. I mean, isn't that what social media really is? All right. I remember when I was on Twitter and I was, <laughs> I was actually just blown away at no matter what I said, there was contrarians, people who disagreed. So to prove my point, to prove my point, I tweeted the word yes with an exclamation mark. Yes, yes. There was no less than 20 people who replied, no, 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 no. I will never forget when I did that test. That's social media. People just bitching and moaning just because they can. No other reason. Turn off the television. Turn off the news. Turn off social media and focus on you incorporated. Don't tune back in until you've made your mark, he says. Because the world is great and everything is great. If it isn't for you, it's because you don't deserve it, and that's that. Just don't bring your bad news to me. Victor became very successful, and I'm only into page 44 of 300 pages. And in the very beginning of the book, he's telling you, tune out the negativity. Tune them out. Say goodbye to people. Block people. Say goodbye. You'll notice on this channel here, I constantly say that I'm creating a community of like-minded people. Not contrarian bitches. Not people that just like want to disagree all the time and spam all the time and just like start trouble. Not interested in that. So I classically say I block more people in one week than more than most content creators purchase in a month or more. I'm not afraid to block. Not as soon as I put my foot down, guess what happened? 
my damn channel started growing. As soon as I started telling people, get the hell out of here, I hate your attitude. It started growing. Like, what? What's that all about? All right. Let's move on. Why you, why you should have a... <laughs> this is great. Why you should have a 3C morning routine. Coffee, cardio, and cold showers. Morning makes or breaks the rest of the day. A good morning makes a good day. A bad morning makes a bad day. So always start your day in the right way. So how do you have a great morning? A great morning starts with the night before. I've said this for years. Prepare your clothing for the next day. Do it the night before so you don't have to think in the morning when you're still tired. Prepare your clothing for the next day the night before. So all you got to do is get out of bed, jump in a shower, go back in your bedroom and just throw the clothes on that you've laid out. And it, you're just like removing any decision-making. You have to wake up at a reasonable hour to have a great morning. 4 a.m. every day. You can't wake up at 1 p.m. and have a great morning. Because the morning is over by then. You can't. Uh, one should go to bed at a reasonable time if one expects to wake up and kick butt. I'd like to be able to say that I go to bed every night at 9 o'clock. And that I'm not dicking around on the internet like everyone else. But that would be a lie. However, I do two things to make sure I get the best sleep I can. Number one, I don't take my laptop into the bedroom. Or maybe, how about phone? Okay. Sleeping in the dark can be a double-edged sword. The lighter it is in the morning, the earlier you will wake up. The darker it is in the morning, the later you will wake up. I find it impossible to sleep past seven in a light room. In a dark room, I can sleep much later. I try to get the best of both worlds. I try to sleep in as dark a room as possible and wake up at a reasonable time. I could just wake up early every day and take a nap in the afternoon, but I don't like taking naps during the day. A nap feels like defeat, so I try to get adequate sleep. I simply try to go to bed at an adequate time to get enough sleep and not require a nap. I typically get to bed somewhere between 10 and 12 a.m., 10 p.m. and 12 a.m., and find this time satisfactory for waking up before 8 a.m. To wake up at 7, I need to go to bed no later than 11. If I want to wake up at 6, I get to bed no later than 10. To wake up at 5, I get to bed no later than 9. Figure out your needs and adjust accordingly. Left to my own devices with no time schedule, uh, know where I need to be in the morning and no partying at night, I end up going to bed between 10 and midnight. I always wake up the same, tired. Now, this is just my experience. You might wake up as refreshed as a daisy, and I'm happy for you. I personally have sleep apnea and wake up repeatedly throughout the night. I haven't had a full night's sleep in 15 years. Victor Pride. Boo-hoo for me, but I wake up and kick ass in spite of not sleeping, not because I sleep well. And my 3C morning routine plays a big part of it. The first C of the three C's is coffee. The first thing I do when I wake up after I go to the bathroom is brew my coffee. I always, always, always do this. The only time I don't have coffee is if I'm catching an early morning airplane or I'm in some crazy hotel that doesn't have coffee. Making and drinking coffee is a great morning ritual. I enjoy the routine, the taste, and the smell of morning coffee. Coffee for me is more than a waker upper because it does much more. Coffee has been the most or my most abused tool for productivity. Each and every great article I have written has been with the help of coffee. I have tried and would try every productivity tool or drug in the world to make me better. And the best has always been coffee. I'm wondering if he ever stirred it with chopsticks. Start with an idea 
and then add coffee. A lot has been made of the supposed ill effects of coffee, but I tend not to believe that coffee hate, and there are many reasons why coffee is healthy. The benefits of coffee include caffeine blocks and an inhibitory neurotransmitter called adenosine in the brain, which leads to a stimulant effect. This improves energy levels, mood, and various aspects of brain function. Drinking coffee enhances mental performance. Drinking coffee enhances physical performance. Coffee is shown to have a positive effect on depression. There's clear evidence that caffeine is very beneficial on attention span. Coffee has shown positive effects on long-term memory. Coffee has shown positive effects for assisting with weight loss, increasing metabolic rate, energy expenditure, lipid oxidation, and lipolytic thermogenic activities. There's a mouthful for you, right? Several studies show that coffee drinkers live longer and have a lower risk of premature death. Coffee drinkers have less diseases. Many of the compounds contained in coffee help fight cancer. These compounds are known as polyphenols and flavonoids. Long story short, drink your morning coffee. The second C of the three C's is cardio. The next thing I do after I drink one mug of coffee is think of reasons why I should skip my morning cardio. I've never been a big believer in cardio for weight loss, so I never did regular cardio. Cardio doesn't do much for weight loss, but it has many other benefits that I was ignoring. Cardio makes you feel, ah, you probably heard of a runner's high. Well, you don't quite get that from morning cardio, but you get a similar peaceful feeling that we call runner's high light. The reasons why you should do cardio, and I am going to interpret that as just going for a brisk walk in the morning. Cardio reduces stress and gives a great sense of well-being and zen. Cardio relieves depression and anxiety. Cardio can increase mental clarity, especially when used with coffee. Cardio can help to relieve soreness in muscles. Cardio increases your endurance, and she will thank you for that. Did you catch how he kind of slipped that in there? Cardio improves heart health. Cardio increases metabolism. Cardio gives you more energy for the day. Cardio can help you sleep better. So when I wake up, I know I'm going to do some morning cardio so I can start the day in a feel-good kind of way. And each morning is the same. On the one hand, I know that I always feel great after hitting 30 minutes of morning cardio. But on the other hand, I'm tired right now and I don't feel like doing it. After going back and forth in my head, I just get dressed and I make myself go to the gym. And I'm always glad I did because I always feel alive after I do. I love to get that morning sweat out of the body. I love to get the blood pumping. I love to get the lungs burning. And I love to wake up. That's interesting because there were times uh, when I was doing my early morning walks at 4 a.m. I was coming up with a lot of reasons to stay in bed. And I fought those reasons. And I went out and I did about a 30 to 40 minute loop in my neighborhood. And every time I finish, every time I finish, I come back and I say, boy, I'm glad I took that walk. I never came back, never. I never came back from my walk and said, I never should have went for that walk. I always say, I'm glad I took that walk. Should you eat before or after cardio? I can go either way. Sometimes I have fruit before I hit cardio. Sometimes I hit cardio on an empty stomach. Just be sure not to hit a big, heavy meal before your cardio. You will definitely be hungry after it, and you'll likely need to eat a meal then. I don't tend to listen to music when I'm doing cardio. I prefer light talk radio to have a little fun. Cardio can be monotonous, so I like to have something to take my mind off of it. I like that. Sometimes I put on a podcast before I leave the house to get myself in a good mood. I listen to podcasts only when I'm doing cardio. So I'll only listen to 30-minute chunks at a time. 
if the podcast is good, I'll leave leave it on a cliffhanger and it gives me added motivation to hit cardio the next morning because I'll be able to continue the enjoyable podcast. The third C of the three C's is cold showers. After I hit my morning cardio, I come home covered in sweat, just in time for a cold shower. I take ice cold showers. Once the weather gets really hot here, like summer hot, where I'm living, I never touch the hot water ever. It's always just only cold water. In the wintertime, the heck with that, man. I want a hot shower. <laughs> like this morning, I had a hot shower. I've had hot showers, you know, all winter long. But as soon as it starts getting a little warm out, cold showers every day, ice cold. The cold shower is the simplest thing in the world to wake you up. Cold showers don't hurt when you're covered in sweat and they feel great. They wash away all the sweat and grime and prepare you for a new day full of kicking ass and taking names. If you had a hard time jumping into a cold shower, you can turn on a warm shower and gradually change the water to cool, then to cold. That's a great way. That is a great way to uh, do it. When I first started taking ice cold showers, I started out with warm water and slowly turn it down. Slowly turn it, you know, turn off the hot water and it just gets cooler and cooler and cooler until ice cold water is coming out. Cold showers are a big part of the reason 30 days of discipline works so well. Cold showers uh, benefits include increasing your willpower and resilience. They increase immune system strength. They increase testosterone levels, improve your mood and alertness, and helps to burn fat and increase metabolism. It improves blood circulation. To put it bluntly, cold showers just make you feel good. And that's my 3C morning routine. Coffee-o, coffee-o. I guess there, that would be a, a mixture of coffee and cardio. Coffee-o. Make sure you do your coffee-o tomorrow. Coffee, cardio, and cold showers. The 3Cs boost mood, metabolism, increase well-being, and increase mental clarity. They wake your sleepy ass up and make you feel good. It's Im impossible to not feel great after a 3C morning. Wake up, grab some coffee, get your cardio in, hop in a cold shower, and kick the day's ass. Rinse and repeat. That's all I'm going to read tonight. I think, uh, I think that's uh, a good place to end it. I hope you enjoyed that. What stands out about that? What? Tell me what you learned tonight. What did you learn that you didn't already know, or what are you motivated motivated to do as a result of hearing that? That's why I like reading different people to you, because. Victor Pride's not going to appeal to everybody. I remember one time I read to you uh, uh, Russell Conwell, Acres of Diamonds. Uh, I've read The Power of Positive Thinking. I read to you this book here, the, the Magic of Thinking Big. I probably read this to you probably two or three years ago, I remember. Those of you that have been around for a while, you remember when I did that. But what did you learn tonight? What is one thing, just give me one thing that you learned. You're not allowed to leave and you, unless you tell me one thing that you learned. And I will wait. I'm motivated to do the cardio for depression, anxiety, not let the depression, anxiety keep me from doing cardio, which is where I'm stuck right now. Excellent. Thank you, Diesel. Peg Bell says, don't argue <clears throat> or debate with idiots. 
Excellent. Yeah, what a waste of time. Jerry says being positive. That's right, leaving the negative people behind. Eliminating them from your life. <laughs> you learn you should have tuned in sooner. Consistency in a morning routine. Boom. That is great. That is great. Yep. Shiny Silver Bunny says, just stopping by as I never get uh, get your lives live broadcasts. I'm taking this as a sign to start cold showers again. I took a cold bath once and added in a bag of ice. It was awesome. And I felt alive. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Matthews says, I learned that if I start the day with a walk, that chances are I won't regret it. So get on with it, Thomas, and start that morning right. Glenn says, be even more myself. BQ says the triple C, right? Coffee, cardio, and cold showers. Or you could do the two C's, coffee-o <laughs> and cold showers. Layton says, starting the day in a much more positive way. Peg Bell says, language matters. Absolutely. What if we, what if we put coffee, cardio, and cold showers all together? What would be one word? You know, coffee-o is coffee and cardio. But what if we created one word for that? An interesting way to make myself do cardi cardio, only listening to podcasts while do it. Yeah, so you're learning something as well. And while you are learning something, it's taking your mind off of the stress or the difficult of cardi difficulty of cardio. I would say, um, like, you know, you could take a brisk walk. Listening to a podcast with a fast walk would be wonderful. Max Josephson says, I am not alone in feeling like smacking a complainer in the face. That's funny. Diesel says, coffee cardiac showers. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Johnny says, coffee and cold -o. Peg Bell says, cardi hour. <laughs> uh, you guys are great tonight. That's funny. Coolio. That's right. The Coolio. <laughs> I do remember Coolio. Coolio did, uh, hold on. Didn't he do like Gangster's Paradise? Proverbs 26, 4, don't argue with a fool or you will be like him. Walk away in silence and remain stoic. Yep. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, I hope you learned something. I know every time I read out loud, I'm also reading to myself as well. Thea, create a solid routine, one that works best for oneself and be constant no matter how you feel. Be committed to your well-being. Yes. Do the morning cardio. It's important and it's not just for weight loss. It is, yeah, it's a, it's a wake-up routine. Get you started. Jump starts your day. Plus the fact you never you never get back from a walk or a bike ride wishing that you never did it. Cacophony. Wake up and make some noise. Yep. Good morning, my neighbors. <laughs> That's right. Good morning, my neighbors. 
that always makes me laugh when people make those videos on YouTube, uh, YouTube shorts or on Instagram. I just get a kick out of that. Absolutely. The first time I heard that, I didn't realize, like the first time I saw one of those videos, I didn't realize it was Eddie Murphy. I didn't. I just, I actually thought it was somebody yelling that out in their neighborhood and then the neighbor yelling that back. All right, it's a short one tonight. And hopefully you learned one thing. That's all I ask, is that you just learn one thing and apply it to your life. One thing. Good morning, my neighbors. <laughs> so good night, my friendly acquaintances. I will see you tomorrow night. I may have a guest tomorrow night. I'm not sure yet. A uh, trial attorney. And we'll, uh, we'll see how that works. So I'll see you probably tomorrow morning on the Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. And thanks for watching me tonight. You have a lot of choices, but you chose to spend a couple minutes with me. And for that, I am thankful. Have a great night, everyone.